Hey, Thomas Campbell here with fellow employee James Tracy here at the tour van at Minnetonka. We're both master club fitters here to take a look at the Epic Flash driver models. I'm currently playing the uh, GBB Epic from 2017 and really excited to take a look at some numbers. I'm a diehard Packer fan, so this model not only looks <laughs> good, but I'm really excited about how the performance compares. I know you've been holding on to your original Epic for a while, Yep. Um, so it should be fun. Let's yep. jump in the bay and smack a few. Let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at some uh, some numbers here with the Epic Flash Driver. Is the that the Sub-Zero or the standard this model? This is the standard model. Yep, this is the standard model. So. And then we're testing it with your... The same shaft same exact shaft I, shaft I play, eight, Tour AD BB6X. So okay. it's the exact same. This is my golf shaft, so there's you no know, differences compared to mine. And you've had the, the original Epic GBB version in your bag since it came out, right? I have, yep. Yeah. I've played that since March 2017. Okay. Yep. And I've liked it a lot, haven't, haven't switched, but it's probably time to change technology up a little bit. Right. First impressions in terms of the shape and sound of that driver compared to the original Epic, what do you uh, think, Thomas? It sounds slightly louder. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's, it definitely sounds a little bit yeah, a little bit louder off the off the face. Okay. Um, feels pretty similar. Looking down at it, um, I could say maybe if anything, I feel like the crown kind of wraps a little bit further down down lower to the to the back here a little bit more. Okay. Um, but it looks looks pretty similar for the most part. Yeah, you can tell it's a Callaway. Yeah, right? definitely tell it's a Callaway. Okay. Yep. a little more solid. And you're testing with the original Epic, what made you go with the GBB versus the Sub-Zero model? Uh, adjustability, to be honest. To be um, able to move that weight around. I like to be able to play around with the, with the weight a lot. Okay. Now, right now we are testing it in the neutral. Just in the neutral, setting. and my okay. driver was, when we hit that, that was that was just in the neutral as well. Okay. Um, but I have played around with all the way up fade, all the way to drawer. How about on but the hosel? What what do you tend to do there? So I currently have a, a nine degree stated and then in the D, so a little more upright, trying okay. to eliminate right, essentially. Yeah, you hate yeah. right. Uh, I hate right, okay. yeah. Yeah, that first shot I hit here, I did not like at all. I always felt when I tested the <sighs> Sub-Zero myself or even with a lot of the customers that I had, we did see a little more right in that original Sub-Zero compared to the GBB, especially, you know, with the yeah. ability to adjust the weight. So for guys that didn't like going to the right or that was their typical miss, the, the standard GBB in the original Epic and probably, um, well, this year it's going to be different because both models both have that movable weight. So it'll be kind of yeah. interesting, really going more for spin and for feel. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see, that's for sure. Okay. I don't mind the idea of Sub-Zero in the past just because it sits maybe a little flatter no, and I can probably go after a little harder and not worry about it going hard left. Yeah. But that right shot, it just, yeah, it bothers me. Okay. Well, we got two. That the shot right, right there, yeah, I you know. Got two, you got two in this sample size. I'm not Let's happy. I'm going to guarantee this one will not go right. A little higher ball speed on that one. That was sure solid. To, you made sure to release that one a little bit. Well, let's do this. Let's maybe play around with that weight a little bit. I know that's one of the things you said you liked about the original Epic was the ability to move that weight in the GBB model. We obviously saw you had to work pretty hard to get that one to turn over. I, that was yep. a perfect ball. That was pure. That last let's one. Let's see what happens so when we solid. throw that weight in the heel and just kind of see what type of movement we see downrange. Sounds good. And then um, compare the uh, Sub-Zero model and see what we get in terms of spin and yep. kind of right and left dispersion. So we're going to just drop that weight. I'm going to throw it all the way in the maximum okay. draw setting just to get a little more movement there. So we'll just add a tag. We'll just call this the draw. And a couple more with that one.
like the flight, I maybe caught that one maybe a tad, tad thin. Yep, yep, launch was a little low. Spin was speed a was down higher. just a touch. That would probably represent a little bit of a lowered centered strike there. Yep. Yep. Good miss though, I had perfect flight. That was a, yeah, good miss. It's pretty good there. Excellent. Yep, better contact. Launch and spin were more in your wheelhouse there. Yep. Felt solid too. Okay, it's kind of just your dead straight ball. Yeah. Well, you can see on the left screen that right away that right. You can see a tighter circle for sure. Yes. Yep. It's hugging the center. Little. You don't have to work quite as hard to get that ball to fall to the left. Yep. No question. You can give us one more with that one there, Thomas. And we'll hit that sub zero and see what we can do in terms of spin. Right now, you're kind of in the mid 2000s on yeah, average. That's a little, I like that it's a, a little bit lower. Spin rate. Yeah, yeah, that's good for a player at your level. Felt pretty good. Another really good one. Yeah, I definitely like that pattern. And again, I think that, you know, in terms of moving the weight, you know, you're a player that can make the ball draw. You know how to do that with your swing. Mm -hmm. So you, the weight for us is more of just an anti right move yep. as opposed to you know trying to influence that ball to draw yep and i think that's sometimes where you know those movable weights and changing the cg especially for better players um you know that's kind of how we utilize it and just try to you know give you a one-way mm -hmm. miss kind of thing so we'll do the same thing with the uh with the sub-zero model we'll throw it in the uh the draw setting a little more upright nine degrees stated loft yep just like the last two tests we've run okay and then we'll throw that weight into the heel which is again something that you weren't able to do on the original epic sub-zero model nope um, and then with that slightly more forward CG we would anticipate a little less spin we'll kind of see what we get here that would be nice if that was the case it's a little bit smaller compact head here too I like it so you do notice the shape difference right at address yeah does that appeal do. more to what you like or? It does. It okay. uh, seems like it's more kind of rounded as opposed to more back, back, back the this crown way. crown is stretched yeah. back as far. Yep. Okay. More traditional. Yep. Solid. Not bad. Yeah, if I could hit that shot every time off the tee, I'd be pretty happy. Maybe a little bit left. Nope. Yeah, held on pretty good. Right nestled held next on. to the first one. Yeah. What well, was interesting, and they both spun at 2,500, two in a row. Yep. Yep. Which, again, you know, in terms of being a competitive player who's playing a draw, you know, mid 2000 spin is a really good recipe in terms of creating good carry, being able to control the kind of the dispersion of your golf yep. ball. You know, low 2000, certainly we can get a little more distance out of it, but maybe a few less fairways. So, mm -hmm. yeah, for you, I think a good range as a guy who draws the ball at 22 to 2600 is, you know, a, a yep. prime, prime place in terms of spin. I agree. I'm trying to, you know, as much as I can, I, if I can pick up just a little bit more of an edge distance, I'm only 5'9, 170, so. Yeah. If I can, you know, if I can get a little more distance some way, I'd be happy. If it forces me to hit up on it and get that spin down, I mean, I'd be happy with that. Correct. So, yeah. yeah, you can get a little greedy. Yeah. <sighs> a little high on the face. Yep, it's that was high on the face. Yeah. Yeah. Again, falling left, though. Yeah. Definitely, I would say, based on your preference of ball flight, having the weight, you know, uh, placed in the heel position on that uh, on that track, 
definitely helping provide you, even on your miss hits with the flight that you're kind of looking yeah, for. Yeah, I did so not hit like that, that one very same. well. And yeah. I mean, you can see the spin was a little higher, but otherwise it was the exact yep. same flight. Yeah. That was not very good. Interesting. That one stayed pretty straight on you. Yeah. So you kind of had four. Definitely felt like I pushed that a little out to the right, but. Yeah, and it's hugged the line, did fall it back to the, the line, left yeah. a little bit. So again, good forgiveness on that strike. Let's kind of throw those, that comparison there. So you're kind of looking at the three different um, tests that we ran. The yellow pattern, that was kind of just in the standard weight position. Yep. You know, I saw your, your face cringe as those balls flared to the right. So we <laughs> made a quick edit to that weight and moved it into the heel, which yep. definitely helped move the patterns in the blue and the purple over to the left. So I think that was a really good pick there. Your mm -hmm. ball speed came up a little bit when we did that too. So you know, being a little bit more efficient with the strike. Yep. Um, turns and launch and spin, you know, very similar on the two models. You know, we saw on average with the sub zero looks like about a hundred, about a hundred RPMs less in yep. that small sample size. You know, I did I, have that one that I did kind of catch a little high on the face that spun at 2,900 that I yep. just hit in there. Yep. I think in even shorter, the standard model, yeah. you did have one, this one here, that spun yep. at 29. Yep. So it was so a consistent I guess so comparison. Consistent, it was yep. good grouping. You had three that fell left, and then your miss hit with both the Sub-Zero and the standard model, you know, as opposed to missing right, we're just basically, you know, five feet right of the center stripe. So yep. miss, you know, all of our viewers are probably wanting, Thomas, so don't complain <laughs> too much about that one. Um, in terms of how it compared to your original, um, the original Epic, let's pull that data up. Yep. Um, and you can kind of see that this white pattern here would be Thomas's original gamer. And that was the original Epic Great Big Bertha. That one did have the weight set in the middle as opposed to in the heel when we tested it. Uh, but if you're looking at in terms of ball speed, we saw both flash models. You know, that machine learning is helping you a little mm -hmm. bit, get a little more greedy. Hey, with every the ball mile speed. an hour helps, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so we saw, you know, an increase of about a mile yep. to a mile and a half uh, on both models. Launch angle was a little bit higher on both. Right, mm -hmm. eleven five with yours, and closer to twelve, and a little north of twelve with the uh, with the sub zero model there. Yep. Um, in terms of spin rate, though, pretty similar. Um, you had a couple with the original Epic that did turn over a little bit more than the others. You kind of see these two white balls over yep. there, and on those two, you had 2, spin rates of twenty two hundred and twenty three hundred. Yep. So that skewed the average spin down just a little bit less. But overall, like we talked about, you're in an optimal range there. You know, I'd say you know knowing your swing. A guy that finds a lot of fairways, and that's where even trying in an eight degree setting, you know, yep. minus one, just again, out of your, you know, Search desire to yeah. more, pick up a couple speed, extra yep. yards, yep. you know, you get pretty good height. Um, the no, peak yeah. height, interesting versus my driver versus the other two though. Peak height at 100 versus 115, 116. And that could be because those two were going a little bit left. Yeah. Th those two that maybe skew the data a little yeah. bit there. Yeah, you know, you were, you, and you were a little more consistent with that peak height, you yep. know, in terms of the plus minus. Um, but I would say that because you're getting a little higher height with you know, similar spin and similar ball speed, you are seeing an increase in carry. So you yep. were up about six uh, yards in carry um, relative to your original game or the original Epic. So I do think the numbers are kind of skewing in your favor a little bit. And that's where, you know, messing around with the hosel adjustment, you're a player who probably get away with an eight degree head, depending on how that's set up and what the dispersion looked like. Yep. But that would tend to add a little bit of ball speed and probably lower the spin, you know, couple hundred RPM, yep. one to two um, on average. In terms of the feel, I know you commented on the shape, you know, instantly you, you like the shape of the Sub-Zero being a little more pear-shaped, a little more traditional. Yep. How would you say in terms of the feel, um, uh, it getting both it drivers, did you have a preference there? I think I like the Sub-Zero feel maybe just a little bit better. It felt like it came off the face maybe just a little bit louder and hotter. I don't know yep. if that was a real thing compared to my driver, mine felt a little bit softer. So to that, that alone, and then just kind of looking down at it too, just a little more compact head. Now I know they're the same size, um, but they're just the way they designed it. It just seems like yeah, the footprint's just a little, a little bit different. is a little bit different on it, yeah. Would you so. say that because of the addition of the adjustability now in the Sub-Zero, does that model become more appealing as an option to put in your bag versus Absolutely. the original one? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know today right now is fighting, and I, I keep saying I, I hate to miss it right. Yeah. But when I get in mid season, obviously it's February right now. I haven't had the chance to play a lot of golf. If I'm fighting that left ball, going even like going out to the 
out to the toe or even making, you know, getting away from being upright with this and then going after it hard, not worry about it going left, that'd be something interesting for me as well to, to play around with. So, yeah. Excellent. Great, Thomas. Again, thanks for uh, giving us your robotic skills with the driver. It was great to see how the new Sub-Zero model kind of plays with that adjustability. Uh, I know that's going to make it a tough decision for you this year if you're looking to upgrade to the new Callaway models. Um, great uh, comparison in terms of how the two heads compared uh, in terms of the launch and spin and ball speed. Um, I think that this year is going to be the year of the driver. There's a lot of really good drivers in the marketplace. Callaway has been really dominant the last two years. And early impressions, I know from your feedback um, and some of the customers that we've had in testing these models already seem to be pretty good with the Callaways. Yeah, Callaway is excellent. Like you said, 2019 is definitely kind of probably the year of the driver. There's probably six or seven manufacturers out there that are pretty solid. Uh, one thing I really loved was the adjustability with this new Epic Flash Sub-Zero. It was, you know, the fact that I can now slide that weight, adjust it, maybe put it more on the heel. If I'm fighting that right, it's great. I, I love it.